Hi, uh, my name is Pat Burns and I'm the owner and developer of Speedy Estimating and I'm going to do a quick uh, tutorial on uh, the different sheets of the Speedy Estimating program. Um, the first sheet, which I have my assistant here helping me film this, is uh, just a flow chart on uh, how uh, the pro progression works. You know, if you want to do a bid from blueprints or just do an estimate out in the field. Uh, the, the good thing about this program is you can go right and put your customer information in and jump right to invoicing, or you can start all the way at the beginning and go through a takeoff and take all your quantities off blueprints and then go uh, right into your estimate with uh, labor and materials, your markup, your work order, your proposal, you know, you type up a contract and then it goes into once the job starts, uh, your job reports and time sheets and your expenses. It's a flow chart it's called. Next sheet is just a reference sheet for diff to keep yourself organized, gives you the estimates you need to do, jobs that you're working on, different types of jobs you're working on, estimated hours so you can help uh, schedule, gives you a, a list of receivables here. Um, that'll, you know, obviously you want to collect your money, so you always want to be on top of that. And uh, repair jobs, any callbacks, it reminds you about those. So that's your to-do list sheet. And you move on to your sheet uh, sales lead. So any call that comes in, you want to enter your information in here first, and uh, it'll carry throughout the rest of the proposals, uh, work orders. Uh, so all this information is crucial to uh, you know all the information on the job. But once you get your customer information in there, you want to enter the job name in here, file name, and then you want to click on your Microsoft uh, Save As, click on that, and you'll have a file name, and you you always start with a master file. This is a blank master we're starting with. Well, actually, we're doing a sample, but you, if you want to start a new job, you start with a sample or the blank master, and you change the name to your job. So you save your name as Smith Job. So that'll have its own file, and you enter all your data in there. So that's your first step you want to do is enter your customer information, enter the file name in this spot and save as. So now you got a separate file for that job. That's kind of confusing to some people. So um, so there's your all your information. And you can print these sheets up, bring them with you out in the field to do your estimate. It gives you, you know, directions, description of work, uh, you know, just a little survey type stuff so you can keep track of and if you have someone taking messages in the office, it'll give the person looking at the job a few uh, heads up on what you're going to look at. So that's your first sheet you're going to deal with. And then the next sheet is a field estimate sheet. That's just, uh, you just print this, bring it in the field with you, and then you, you scribble, you know, you take notes, you know, you do your measurements, and you bring it back in the office if you want uh, to do your estimate in the office uh, with your written quantities and come up with your takeoffs. So the next sheet is a takeoff. And all takeoffs are doing is you're trying to gather all your quantities. For instance, drywall, ceilings, uh, wall coverings, how many doors. And uh, the takeoff is just trying to gather up quantities of different surfaces or I call them items. Items that need to have a price applied to them. Uh, so uh, once you get all your item quantities, square foot, doors, then it goes to the takeoff summary. Takeoff summary will be listed and the data will carry off into the sheet all by itself. All you have to do is apply your square foot prices right here. It's in red and you can actually follow along uh, if you have this video and I've sent you a demo you can follow along with the sample instructions with this sheet to, to see where I'm talking about. But uh, you know walls three coats, walls two coats, ceilings, exposed ceilings, you know, the different surfaces that you're going to put a price on, and then you apply your price, 
you'll have your total this could be your total bid then you break out your labor materials on this side uh, so you can you know do a labor burden sheet so once you get your this is a this is a square foot method then you go uh, there's a sheet here for production rates. You can do your own files on how uh, much things cost per square foot, different labor rates. Uh, you pretty much build your own database there. Uh, I don't. Uh, the means or uh, Walker will give you you know square foot industry square foot prices. Uh, so your next sheet here is materials. So these are all estimated. So now you're going to break out an estimated labor sheet or material sheet. And then an estimated labor sheet. So all your when you're figuring out an estimate, anything that's a material you put in here at cost, and then you mark it up on your estimate sheet. So any material goes in here, quantities and cost, and it'll carry over to your estimate sheet. And your estimate sheet is uh, your estimated hours per man. Different labor rates will you know with different uh, with your amount of hours will total up, and this is what your estimated cost is. Um, and if you have subcontractors, you can add them in trucks, uh, equipment, labor, let's see. And then your material costs will carry off here. That's your total costs, labor materials, everything. Then you come over here and you, whatever your overhead is, you can change this, uh, to your markup. Uh, 38 percent is what I go by a little high but we don't do the volume as some of the other bigger contractors so our overheads a little bit higher percentage uh, so there's your you know what you're gonna take out of the job for overhead and then you mark a profit on top of that and here's your profit you can vary that 10 15 percent is uh, pretty much standard sometimes I go a little higher uh, and then you got capital you can plug in your sales tax amount if it's a capital improvement or all taxable different states are different so you'd have to go by your state so there's a there's a way a, a labor burden way to figure so you got three different ways to figure a quote here's a third way just straight hours you know if your labor rate is $35 an hour you figure 900 hours you know based on your other two ways you figured it there's your uh, labor at retail price you could put overtime in here, your material at cost with a you know a markup on your material and equipment with a markup, fuel and travel. So I figure my estimates usually out three different ways, compare them, and usually I'm you know pretty close. So the next sheet is a proposal sheet, and that's where you just type in uh, your scope of work with your price. This will be uh, could be signed by the customer. And it's a you know come becomes a contract once it's signed. Uh, you can go through that. Look at the details. Okay, work order is the next sheet. This is designed for uh, your men. It gives you the scope of work without all the prices. Uh, at the bottom, it does have some costs. If you want to give your guys costs to have uh, targets for you know labor costs, material costs, so they don't go over budget. But you print this up, give it to the guys when they start a job, and it gives them the scope of work and some targets for costing. Uh, next sheet is a.